I have never been able to see that so clearly. I am just amazed by by this because you're what you said, like I immediately had like maybe 12 different thoughts of things I could talk about that would speak to that specific person. Where do I find my ideal clients? And what if I'm putting out content and getting myself out there, but not getting the responses that I want to see? This is a couple questions that was posed to me uh, through Kimberly. Kimberly Winters is a member of the Serving Circle, reaching out to me saying, hey, I'm getting myself out there. Why isn't people, why aren't people reaching out to me and booking sessions? Why aren't people reaching out and responding to my calls to actions in my content and on my videos? So this is a a bit of impromptu live coaching call where we solve all of that. You're gonna see a big shift within Kimberly's energy, motivation, insights, not only to overcome the fears when it comes to disappointment, to also get very, very clear on a particular compelling message. And what you'll see is how many ideas flow through, how many ideas flow through as a byproduct of getting these two disciplines down pat. So if you are releasing content, if you are putting yourself out there and you're not necessarily getting the response that you want to see, this is the episode for you and this is what you want to sort of ask yourself. So as I ask Kimberly the questions, ask yourself these questions. What you may find is some very, very similar insights. So please connect with Kimberly. I'll put all the links below, offer some support wherever this is posted because I know it's not easy to jump on here and to be so open and vulnerable with these particular questions. So definitely reach out, show your support, and I'll see you guys in the serving circle where you can start collaborating with your soul tribe. Let's dive into the coaching. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Awaken Your Business podcast. We have Kimberly Winters here and we're going to do some more live coaching impromptu. We we're just discussing beforehand. I've got no clue where this is going to go. Kim's got no idea, no idea where this is going to go. Um, but I thought I'd just give you guys a little bit of an intro to Kim. Then we'll dive into the uh, discussions about her business, what we can help with. And as we roll forward, the insights, the, the guidance uh, might be able to apply to you, but definitely the questions that I asked Kimberly here, you can definitely ask yourself in your business so that you can not only get the reach that you want, create the impact you want, but obviously the clients and income as well that happens as a byproduct. This is all possible. I'm looking to bring more of these conversations moving forward, more of these coachings, and hopefully it, uh, hopefully it reaches out to the audience and you guys can apply what uh what matters most to you and your business so kim first of all thank you for being here i know it's not easy me. it's definitely a uh it's definitely a place of of openness courage vulnerability so we definitely thank you for being here i'll give you a quick bio read so that people can uh get a brief understanding about who you are and then we'll dive into your business questions so kimberly is a vegan guide a vegan chef in training, Reiki practitioner, certified crystal energy guide, Oracle card reader, public speaker, everything, it seems. So Did You Bring the Hummus began as a podcast and has expanded uh, to including coaching classes, healing sessions, and live talks. That is Kimberly's company. Kim, first of all, welcome. How are you doing? Thank How are you, you feeling? I am great. Yeah. Awesome. Very excited to be here. Me too. Me too. I always feel excited whenever I have these chats because we have no clue what's going to happen. Everything can come up and we welcome all of it. Um, first of all, you reached out with a particular question around how do I find the right people? How do I find the right clients? And I know many people are creating content, podcasts, Facebook groups, you name it, all of the stuff. And the question really is, how is it reaching the people that 
are going to align most with me, my message, who I can help most, and what's going to be compelling enough to have them reach forward and organize that next step. It might be a sales call or, you know, it might be sign up for a freebie. It may be jump onto this webinar, whatever, whatever, whatever funnel you have set up, whatever uh, value ladder people have set up. That's really the key question. How do we get more of that? Mm -hmm. So how are you feeling about all this? Where, where is your initial question? And uh, then we can dive into some more specifics, but what's the initial question here? How can we help most? So when I think about who my people are, I feel like I know who they are, but apparently I have no idea where they are. Okay. Because when I put things out on social media, I even did um, a workshop not too long ago with, <clears throat> with another person and she got a couple of her people to come in, but they were not my people. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not, I'm putting things out on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, uh, but they're just not, people aren't coming back to me. Mm -hmm. And I, I do have a ton of free content out there between the podcast, Did You Bring the Hummus? And then I also do some live talks through another, uh, through YouTube, through another organization. And so you can find me kind of everywhere. And there's just a ton of info out there, but I keep saying at the end of each show, you know, reach out, do you have questions? How can I help you? Let me know what you need, because that's why I'm doing this. Uh, and I don't, I don't hear back. Okay, cool. Great. Yeah. You're definitely not alone there. Um, when you have, when you're putting out a message, just so I'm clear and everyone listening, when you're giving talks, when you're putting out content, is it referring to anything in particular? Because obviously in, in your bio, you've got a bunch of different things that you, a bunch of different, what we would call your vehicle. This is how you help people. So mm -hmm. whether it be through Reiki, whether it be through, you know, you know, cards or whatever, whatever it is that you help people with, um, there are many, many avenues. There are many vehicles that, that you can help people get from A to B. Mm -hmm. So my initial question, just as we get some of the details and numbers down pat, it seems like you're reaching enough people. It seems like you're getting out there. It mm -hmm. seems like people are observing your stuff. Mm -hmm. Enough people are observing your stuff that should be enough for you to have a consistent flow of clients. Is that, is that generally what you're saying? Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. All that needs to sort of it seems to be the particular message isn't compelling enough that's going to allow people to reach out to you and mm. respond to your call to action that says, hey, book this call, or hey, let me know what how I can help you most. You know, book in something with me or message me. And mm -hmm. most people aren't necessarily responding to that call to action. Right. Does that seem to be does that seem to be it? Yes. Okay. So most of the things that I put out are really around the veganism part of it. Uh, that's the focus of the podcast is, is to share tips and, and have vegans come on and share their stories so that people who are curious about veganism or thinking about it, but really don't know where to start, they can maybe hear someone else's story and resonate with it. And go, well, if this person could go vegan, I can go vegan too. And I'm always looking for ways to help people do that in a way that works for them. Some people go vegan overnight, right? But that's not most people. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so much emotion tied up in the way that we eat and the products we buy. And there's a lot of thought and, and just connection to those things. So we've got to work through that. But yeah, when I put out the, you know, I do the live talks and that's all about different vegan topics, podcasts, same thing. And then I'm also part of a vegan talk show where we talk about more vegan topics. And uh, anytime I ask, yeah, like, how can I help you go vegan? Or even if you're not ready to go vegan, do you want to maybe incorporate some aspects of that into your life to figure out if you want to do it? Okay. And uh, yeah, I guess- cool. So that answers yeah. the question in terms of kind of answers the question in terms of what you're helping people with. You're helping them go vegan. Mm -hmm. So you're helping them go vegan. You're helping people. It seems 
who would like to go vegan, who are struggling to go vegan, helping them with methods, modalities, tips, advice, mm-hmm. coaching to help them to help them go vegan. Right. Yep. Is that what you do with your content and is that do with your coaching coaching services? Yes. Yes, it is. Okay. Awesome. Um so that's a good that's a good area of a good area of focus. So one thing that I love doing, so that we have that cleared, one thing I love doing is going internal and and so we can see what needs to be seen there. Mm-hmm. And then we can go external in terms of numbers, in terms of strategies, everything like that. Okay. And then we can combine the two. And then we can <laughs> sort of we can sort of see from all aspects. So my question here that everyone can ask themselves as well is as you put your message out there, as you do what you can to get yourself out there to help people with advice, tips, content, YouTube videos, Facebook, so all the, all the things, and then you don't necessarily get the response back that you want. Question, what emotion does that bring up? What is, what is, what, what do you feel in those moments? I feel like disappointment Mm -hmm. and kind of confusion. Like where, what am I missing? Okay. What, what is it that I'm not saying? Because when I think about, you know, so often when you go through coaching programs, things like that, right, they tell you that you help people who you used to be. So, you know, you from, a different phase in your life. So when I think about when I started on this journey, someone offering what I'm offering would have made a lot of sense to me. And I would have been really into that. I didn't know a single vegan for many, many, many years. And uh, it, I know I would have resonated with that. So thinking, well, that's what they tell us. This is how we're supposed to figure out how to talk to our people. Mm-hmm. but it's still not working. Okay, great. Yeah. Now, first of all, <clears throat> that's really good feedback. It's really good feedback from an audience. So we're always, if we, um, if we look at this from an outside lens with a neutral perspective, we can see, hey, if we're the scientists and we're putting a message out there and we're not getting a lot, in, a lot of responses, even though it's reaching a lot of people, there may be some things here that we can test and tweak. Mm -hmm. Now, although a coaching program said, Hey, you know, to release this message and you said, Oh, cool. I can have the hypothesis of testing this. Then you put it out there and you don't necessarily get the feedback. Can you see how that's, can you see how that's a really good data point for you to say, Oh, cool. I put that out. It didn't necessarily resonate. Mm -hmm. Now. Yeah question how much does that have on your own worthiness well thankfully that's something i've been working on yeah cool (laughs) and it has less of that feeling now than even you know maybe two years ago two years ago it really hurt when people didn't respond yeah definitely so let's um so let's get an indication here on what are the deep lessons that we're learning because whenever we're building a business whenever a heart calls us to something and obviously you're following your passion you're following your heart you're taking your leaps here there's always some deep deep lessons deep inner healing of course some some deep growth that comes with that leap one of them being is as we take our leaps put ourselves out there and things don't happen the way our mind thinks they should mm-hmm. Whatever we feel in that moment is, is a, is a deep inner pattern that's ready to be seen. Mm. So let's work. So let's work through this. Cause as we see that pattern, what's really happening is all the healings taking place necessary for you to evolve into the version of you capable of achieving what you want to achieve. So play out this scenario, let's say. You're feeling called to evolve to the version of you who can 
create a thriving online business, helping people get from A to B, right? Non-vegan to completely vegan and feeling awesome about it. Let's say you achieve all of that, but you achieve all of it without ever healing the pattern that says, oh my God, I need to achieve this in order for me to feel enough. Mm. Or I need to make money to feel safe. Or I need approval of other people for me to feel worthy. Which is what Mm. might be coming up as you feel disappointment and confusion with the lack of responses which we'll dive into next, but let's play out this scenario. You achieve as much money as you want, as much clients as you want, enough reach as you want, but underneath everything, you're still attached emotionally and energetically to the money, to the recognition, to the the clients and the numbers. Can Mm. you see how that may not be in your highest expansion? (laughs) Yes, for sure. Yeah. And why is that? Yeah. Well, it's I the feeling attached to that leaves me kind of stuck in this expectation. And my whole focus then becomes on what I'm getting or doing and not what and who I'm being. Yes, exactly. So that's why no matter how much clients you get, no matter how much money you make, unless this pattern seen, mm-hmm. you'll always live in fear. Now I oh, yeah. use this example with my clients. So let's say I have a, this pen is a pen, but let's say I'm under the illusion that if I drop this pen, I'm going to die. Mm. Now I have it in my grasp. And I'm not going to drop it anytime soon. Question is, do I feel safe? No, no. Mm-mm. Cause there's still the possibility. My safety still mm-hmm. resides in holding the pen. Mm-hmm. So for whatever reason, you're on the path where life's guiding you through certain situations, certain events, certain emotions, right? Certain responses that allow you to see that the illusion you have that if I drop this pen, I'm going to die. And if I don't get recognition, I'm not enough. And if I don't make money, I'm not safe is an illusion that we solve now that we can heal now. Mm. So then we can feel just as loved, just as safe, just as enough, just as guided, just as graceful, just as divine, no matter what happens outside of me. Right. How that shows up is a lack of response from your audience. Mm. And then this inner, this inner Kimberly, this little child Kimberly comes up that says, oh my God, I'm not getting this recognition. I must not be loved. I must not be enough. Hmm. Is this resonating? Oh, yes. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. So what most people do is they say, hey, as soon as I have this emotion, I'm going to go out and succeed. So then I don't, so I don't need to feel this. Hmm. So we avoid this little inner Kimberly and we push that side of us down and try to bury it with stuff and money and success. What's life, life's guiding you to in your spiritual journey is saying, hey, you're here to become more whole. You're here to become more healed. So you have more to give to the world. So we're going to allow you to see this in a child. We're going to allow you to see this in a pattern so it can be healed, so you can grow. So therefore, you can eventually give what you want. Yeah. That also explains a lot of why I have felt so tethered to maintaining like a corporate job too. Yeah. Mm. Beautiful. So how we do this is if you take a deep breath right now, I want you to view, imagine, role play the disappointment from the lack of responses. So you Mm -hmm. put yourself out there and you don't have much response in return. You're asking people, how can I help most? Or, you know, giving them call to actions and there's lack of response to the call to actions. Yeah. Now, if you breathe in deep, how does that feel in your body? Mm. 
it feels like a, a bit of a weight on my heart and kind Beautiful. of a, a pit in my stomach. Okay, great. Awesome. Yeah. So if you were to breathe deep, just allow your heart to feel heavy, as heavy as mm-hmm. it needs to be. And feel that pit in your stomach. And I want you to just exaggerate them a little bit. Exaggerate the sensations. Exaggerate the, mm-hmm. the temptation or the sensations a little bit. And just breathe with it and hold space for it. So just allow it to be there, welcome it. And what you'll notice is that you're not the sensation. You're not the emotion. You're not the beliefs. You're the observer. Not only are you the observer, you are the loving safe space that holds these sensations. Hmm. And the emotion of your body, of your spirit, of life, knows exactly what needs to happen in order to heal this, in order to be seen and in order to heal what needs to be healed. So just breathe deep and allow your heart to feel as heavy as it needs to be. Feel the pit in your stomach and just hold it with loving safe space. Like I said, you might want to exaggerate the sensations a little bit to welcome it in. And you just want to breathe and just welcome it without judgment and without resistance. So just allow the, allow it to be there. And as you do that, just continue to breathe and I'll explain a few things. One is that this is really how our soul expands. Our soul expands through contrast, through experience. So right now you're getting to give yourself permission to feel disappointed. You give yourself permission to feel confused. You give yourself permission to feel not enough. You give yourself permission to feel unloved or unseen or whatever it may be and you hold that in your body as you hold it in your body without judgment without resistance without reaction the pattern's finally seen and all patterns just need to be seen that's how you provide light to the darkness you provide light by observing what your mind was not capable of observing before or didn't want to observe before now if you were to go out and make a lot of money I'll try to get a lot of clients, you'll be avoiding this pattern. It's like a five-year-old coming up to you saying, I'm scared, I'm disappointed, I'm worried, I'm confused. And you're saying, okay, cool, let's go make money so you don't feel that way. Yeah. Now, how seen does a five-year-old feel? Completely ignored. Yes. And as it's ignored, it grows unconsciously. No matter how much money you make no matter how much recognition you get off other people. But this is how you take your power back. This is how you recall your spirit, your soul from this energy signature is by feeling this fully, welcoming it, allowing it to be there and just allowing it to do whatever it needs to. Mm. So as you breathe, as you feel this in your your body, what is it that you notice? As you feel your heart or your stomach or whatever energy is coming through you, what is it that you notice? I noticed my first instinct actually was to start reciting the Ho'oponopono poem. Okay, cool. Do you know that? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, as I'm breathing and, and you said to realize that I'm the observer, that I'm not these emotions, I, I was actually able to step away from it. And uh, my heart feels a little bit lighter. Mm. And why do you think that yeah. is? I think because I paid attention to it, but I didn't like take it mm-hmm. in and like assign it to me. Yep. I just kind of let it be there. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So, mm. so just breathe deep right now and tune back into your body and notice the vibration sensation, just observe. And what is it that you notice? Anything that you, anything that's heavier, lighter, deeper? Is it shifting, pulsating, moving? As you just provide a loving safe space for it. What else do you notice? I notice that I feel like I want to laugh and cry at the same time. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Awesome. So allow that energy to allow that energy to do whatever it needs to. Just 
Just continue to breathe, continue to feel. Where do you think the emotion's coming from? I think it's coming from the fact that I've taken a moment to pay attention to this. It's it's almost like um, like little Kimberly is like thanks thanks for mm. noticing me here. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. totally. So yeah. notice this, and everyone who's listening that resonates can see in their own business when we've been working in our business, creating content, organizing uh, collaborations, client calls programs unless we do this work it'll come through the filter mm. of i need to succeed to feel enough mm. unless we do this inner work it'll come through that filter so mm. therefore when opportunities present themselves clients present themselves uh you know certain things run your way it'll come through the filter of I need to, I need to make this happen so I can feel enough, so I can feel love, so I can feel recognized, so I can be feel seen, so I can feel safe rather than being like, Oh, that's a pattern I can see in myself and I can heal it by feeling it fully mm -hmm. and then just breathing with it, doing, allowing it to do what it needs to. And then what happens, you have a bit of a release, whether it's through your heart feeling lighter through laughter, through, uh, crying, you have some sort of release of mm -hmm. this child saying, thank you for finally seeing me. Thank you for, it's really saying, thank you for providing me the unconditional love that I needed. Mm. So how does that feel? Uh, important. <laughs> yeah. Um, what else is coming up? And so you think you think you've done the work, right? Because I've done tons of inner child healing, and, but there's more. Who would have thought? <laughs> <laughs> who would have thought <laughs> seems like a silly statement to make yeah but i have um, my certification i have this piece of paper didn't, <laughs> right. didn't life see that didn't life see this paper <laughs> what about all this journaling i know. did not yeah and i, and yeah, I it's like i finally i feel frustrated and lost and, and stuck and confused but life clearly didn't see the six-week course i did <laughs> that, that, that gives me permission to be whole and healed. Right. Life screwed up. <laughs> but when you finally look inside and say, oh, this is always an unfolding. Mm -hmm. It's always an unfolding. And therefore, we need to ask ourselves the same questions time and time and time again. One of them being is, what do I fear most? And if that fear is to come true, what will I feel? Mm -hmm. What will I need to feel in my body? Another question, another question there is what side of me do I need to provide unconditional love for? Mm. As you provide unconditional love to that side of you, the pattern's finally seen, the pattern starts to heal in its own time. Now you're so powerful that that generally happened in the matter of a couple of minutes, but this is where the, this is where the real work begins because as we start talking about business numbers, strategy, Creativity can now flow through you through guidance, mm. intuition, love, playfulness, whatever, whatever is needed with more ease. Cause that's who and what you mm. are, who and what you are is creativity, flow, love, peace, playfulness. That's who and what you are. You're able to access that more, the more you get to see yourself fully. Mm. Can you feel that? Yeah. Awesome. So do you have any particular questions? Do you have any particular uh, patterns you notice in yourself that you want to bring up? Anything like that? Well, certainly a pattern that I have is that I love to start things mm -hmm. and have the ideas and 
feel all the excitement of yay something new and then uh the actual execution of things is troubling like even look at the list of things that i i that were in my bio right i love all of these things and i want them all to be in a thing mm -hmm. <laughs> together <laughs> and it's like how I'm already, and you know, this obviously was a thought I had before our conversation started. My thought was, I'm already not getting anyone to respond to me. If I then add in, like, do you want to go vegan? And are you also into crystals and Reiki and Oracle card readings? Like, what are there like five people? No, I mean, I'm being, you know, silly here, but um, am I like narrowing it down too much? And I, so that's been kind of, that's my pattern. Yay, new. Okay, I'm bored. And, and then also like, I love all this stuff. Let's do it all together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So great. were those questions? I don't know. <laughs> so here's a good thing I can unpack this. But one of the things we can, one of the things we can see is that the different view you'll have on this. Because you'll easily, when you do this work, you'll easily be able to see when you're coming from a pattern of safety or a pattern of significance com compared to a, a calling from your heart. Mm. Right? And your heart generally yeah. says, it generally helps you guide you to what needs to be healed and where you need to go for your expansion. Okay. Your heart won't say, go do another course if you've already got 15 courses under your belt. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's a pattern to just go to new new things and study new things. Your heart will always guide you to what's unknown and your heart will always guide you to what's generally outside of your overdeveloped patterns. So if you have a pattern, shiny, shiny new things, and then get bored, mm -hmm. it'll feel in your expansion, but also feel scary to stick to something. Oh, that's true. Yeah. So the lesson, the spiritual lessons you may be picking up here are one of integrity and mm -hmm. also one of also one of endurance. It for whatever reason. Yeah. We can have a look in all spiritual texts. There's generally always <laughs> some lessons of endurance. And people okay. forget this. I'm not alone. <laughs> people forget this. There's there's it's it's one that's really really powerful on the spiritual journey but also on the business journey is one of endurance we're always being challenged and tested to say hey how much are you willing to follow your heart even if things don't go the way your mind thinks they should even if it brings up all of the fears and insecurities and judgments how how are you how much are you willing to stay on the path and become the version of you capable of following your heart regardless of what your your mind says or what the world looks like that's endurance. All right. So this that seems to be wrapped up in a nice spiritual lesson here. Mm -hmm. And now you can sort of see things through the lens of your, of your heart and more from a whole self, your healed self that says, Hey, I'm fine. No matter what, let's follow my heart and mm -hmm. and sit with whatever comes up because the world needs me in my highest and the world needs me healed and whole so that's my mm -hmm. that's my priority yeah so then when you stick to something when you move forward with something from the the muscle building the muscle of endurance it'll bring up some uncomfortable emotions you'll feel It'll bring up uncomfortable emotions because the pattern that wants to go to the new thing needs to die. Mm -hmm. But it'll also feel expansive because your heart will guide you to build that muscle of endurance and in and self integrity. It says, mm -hmm. "Hey, I committed to this. I'm staying, sticking to it." Yeah. So, how does that feel? That feels good. Cool. Yeah. Do you have any questions on that? No. What do you think is the thing that feels in your highest expansion that you need to stick to? Hmm. 
That is, that is quite a question. So of course I want to say both. I want to do all the things mm -hmm. both. I see like, you know, the vegan aspect and then the spiritual side. Um, and so I'll just kind of talk through it maybe and figure that out. Mm -hmm. So the, the vegan side, helping people go vegan, understand why people go vegan, all of that is so important to me and it's so much of who I am like uh, people who know me like they just they know that and it's not because I run in the room and yell I'm the vegan here uh it's just so ingrained in me and I love talking about it and I love when people experience vegan food or or it like registers to them why they finally want to go vegan they understand their why and it's so amazing because for me, I feel like it's such a loving way to live and the world needs more of that than anything right now that I feel like it's, it's work that's so much bigger than like, what are you eating today? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I think about the spiritual side and how much, because this is a very new thing for me. Uh, as a child, I was very staunchly atheist, and that lasted up until, I don't know, maybe like 10 years ago, where I started to just not be angry about <laughs> spiritual things. And then in 2020, my cat passed away, and I had always felt like, when you die, that's it. Things go black, and you are no more. And when my cat died, and I had the thought that she would never exist again. It was so painful to me that I had to find something to tell me otherwise. And so then I started on this journey and I see how much it's helped me, not just in dealing with that loss, but how much it's helped me understand myself mm -hmm. and relationships. And so again, it feeds into that the world needs more love. And here's another way to create more love in the world. And so that's why I feel kind of stuck with, I guess, where I can't, I can't choose because they both feel so important. Yeah, cool. So yeah. from a place of creativity, how can you integrate, how could you integrate the two? Mm. I do feel like because when you learn why people go vegan. Sure, some people start eating plant-based because of their health, but veganism as a whole is, is an ethical stance. And so when people start to understand that, they start to see how animals are treated and, and they it can be very painful. And not just painful to, to see or to read about, but also to think about having been part of that as someone who wasn't vegan. And so it, it brings up a lot of emotion and a lot of pain. And so I see the, the Reiki and, and crystal healing sessions and card readings as a way to, to work through that pain and to help them kind of process everything in, an, in a healthy, safe way. So it seems like the spiritual tools are your vehicle. They're the modalities helping people go from A to B. So it seems like this could be a particular message where you help people go, you help people um, who are trying to go vegan and currently unsuccessful at it to mm -hmm. successfully go vegan long term using mm -hmm. spiritual modalities. Mm. I love that. Well, it's just, it, that's just piecing together. <laughs> A particular yeah. message so therefore right. you will call in the people who are spiritually minded because there's let's say there are many many ways there are many vehicles people can go from non-vegan to vegan mm -hmm. you can do that through a personal trainer you can do that through scheduling you can do that through um journaling and journaling certain diets and keeping track of your macros you know mm -hmm. you can and you can do it in many many ways 
your message is, hey, the best way that I found is implementing spiritual disciplines or spiritual tools. Hmm. Like spiritual tools of, of Reiki, Oracle cards, you know, inner healings, these sort of things. And yeah. you can explain why. You can explain why your vehicle has helped you on your journey, but why your vehicle is the best method, modality, way that's going to get them from A to B. Mm-hmm. You know, it entwines all of all of your passions, but yeah. in a way that explains what's needed and why they need it. Mm-hmm. How do you feel hmm. about that? There's so much clarity there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I love this. Thank you. So then, so you could, cause in my, in my mind, if you're reaching enough people and you have your call to action and most people aren't responding, that tells me the particular message you're putting out there isn't compelling enough. Yeah. If it's compelling, they'll reach out. If it's compelling, then they'll, they'll say, oh, cool. Let me sign up for this call. Let me give you some feedback. Let you know how, let me connect and see how we can build a relationship or collaborate or something. Mm -hmm. but if you're unclear in your message then it's going to be it's no hope for anyone else yeah that's right that's true right (laughs) so here are some core things you already know who your niche is because they're people who are open-minded and spiritual and people who probably want to become vegan maybe for health and spiritual reasons Mm -hmm. Um, so you can talk to that, but your key talking points when it comes to your niche are your who. So who's who's that specific person if you had to describe them in like two or three words? Um, mm, two or three words. Um, compassionate. Mm-hmm. And well, who would you love to work with? Any particular person of gender, age, profession? Um, hmm. You can do this in a couple of ways. One, you can look at your ideal clients now, who have you served right. in the past, who's been incredible. But even if you just want to, even if you just want to go on a thought experiment. Mm-hmm. If you just want to go on a thought experiment and throw a few things out there, um, who is that particular person and how would they describe themselves? So anyone, anyone you've worked with in the past or anyone you haven't worked with, but you just, you would love to help them. You would love to have that particular person. Anything come to mind? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So probably, you know, anywhere between like 35 so like 45, 50, that range, um, people who are, and I don't think it's specific to gender, Mm -hmm. um, but people who are, you know, looking for, they feel like something's missing. So we're going into the problem here. We just want to talk about the person. Oh, right. Sorry. Um, if I think about if I, if I imagine the person that just came to mind, it's a woman, she's in her forties and she, she'd been vegetarian for a long time, but wanted to go vegan and is definitely, she loves meditation and, um, she's open to those things and she wants to go vegan, but she just hasn't found the will to stop eating cheese. Okay, cool. Let's go down this route. (laughs) Okay. Hear me out. Hear me out just as a thought mm-hmm. experiment. Yeah, yeah. Right, we're not we're not tying down to anything. Just I just want to show you what can open up when you do this. Your mm-hmm. person, right? Spiritual what vegetarians? Yeah. Spiritual sure. vegetarians. <laughs> What's the problem they have? They can't stop eating cheese. Mhm. They want to stop eating cheese <laughs> and they can't mm-hmm. do it. 
Now, instantly, I know if that's for me or not. Right. Instantly, if you put out a message, someone's going to be like, holy shit, that's me. <laughs> My fridge is full of cheese. <laughs> right? right. Now, instantly, I know the exact problem that they have. They're addicted mm -hmm. to cheese. I know the exact outcome that they want. They want to stop eating cheese. They want to stop eating dairy. Right? They mm -hmm. want to go full vegan. Yeah. Now, can I create specific content for that? Can oh, create, yeah. Can I create specific talking points, messages, interviews, whatever? And can I start talking to why it's so important? Can I start talking to why it's so important? What's going to, what's going to, their life's going to be like when they're calling them to go vegan, but they keep eating cheese and it might do something to their, their body. They might react poorly to it. It might drain their energy because they know they shouldn't be. It's not giving them the most energy and, and vitality. And yet they just can't seem to break this pattern. Mm -hmm. And they come to you who says, Hey, you're a spiritual vegetarian. You have this addiction to cheese. Let's use these spiritual tools in a way that allows you to overcome that addiction mm. so that you can live a vegan lifestyle that you're being called to and in a way grow spiritually on that journey. Mm. Yeah. I have never been able to see that so clearly. Good. You can mm. watch this recording. Yes, hey, I will. This is just an example. <laughs> this is just this is an example. Now it's mm -hmm. good that this is clear. This doesn't have to be the message, right? Do yeah. You under, do you understand that it's clear? Yes. Now, yeah. Obviously, now you know exactly where to go to find them. You know exactly mm -hmm. what to do for your market research. You know exactly who's yeah. for your program, who's not. You know exactly mm -hmm. what sort of ways you can talk about your program to make it compelling. And then all of a sudden, hey. You put out messages and people are like, Kimberly, you got to help me. Fridge is full right. of cheese. <laughs> so you see how putting out, because you've got specific about the person, the problem mm -hmm. that they have and the outcome transformation they want, you now know how to talk to why it's so compelling, why it's a must for them. Right. So you can talk to why it's a must for them, mm -hmm. which is the compelling piece. And then also why your vehicle, the spiritual tools are the best vehicle for them. Right. It's not a personal trainer. It's not counting your macros. It's not journaling your, your, your um, eating habits. It's not mm -hmm. walking every day. It's using the spiritual tools. So that going okay. from A to B, going from vegetarian to vegan is part of their spiritual growth. Mm -hmm. So the spiritual tools are the must. The spiritual tools yeah. of the vehicle is that's that's the key for them. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Thoughts? I am just amazed by by this because you're what you said, like. I immediately had like maybe 12 different thoughts of things I could talk about that would speak to that specific person. Mm -hmm. And I, I haven't had that happen well, when I've tried to do this. This yeah. is really cool because when you focus on the inner healing of holy shit, mm -hmm. what's coming up for me on this journey, coupled with, remember what I said we're going to do? We're going to do the inner we're going to do the outer oh, right. strategy yes, the, and then we're going to yeah. bring them together. And here's why. Oh yeah. <laughs> what flows through you now, what mm -hmm. flows through you in terms of these 12 ideas is so effortless. It's such mm. a calling. It's such a pull. It's so exciting. It flows through you effortlessly. Right. Because one, you do the inner healing. It's not necessarily mm -hmm. coming through the filter as much of, holy shit, I've got to get this right or this right. needs to be perfect, or this, I need to succeed to feel enough. It's now flowing through you because that side of you has been seen. Mm -hmm. And then couple that with some tools, tactics, strategy of actually getting clear and talking to a specific person with specific uh, talking points. All of a sudden, what happens? 
ideas emerge and flow, and then you can combine the two. Yeah. Wow. Pretty cool, hey? Yeah, I'd say. <laughs> cool. So question. What do you think is your next expansive step, leap? What feels a calling for you, whether it's getting clear in this message, putting out a particular message, you know, sharing a particular call to action? What do you think? What are you excited about next that might be both scary slash exciting? Mm. Definitely more clarity on, on this message so I can then create a call to action that actually will get people to respond. Mm -hmm. uh, like it just, right now I know that it's going to happen. Like I'm not worried about it at all, but cool. it is scary. You were right. Yeah. It is a little like, ee. yeah, cool. But what's the, what's the scary part? I guess there's still, um, there's still that, that feeling, a little bit of that feeling of if I, if I do this and I feel like I've got, I've got something here that people can't say no to the people that it's for. What if they still say no? Yeah. Cool. Awesome. That's something to yeah. feel. Is something to hold in yourself? <laughs> Cause there'll be a sabotage in you that says, Hey, I can't do that. Cause then I'll have no excuse. Right, if I get everything clear and uh -huh. they still say no, it's got right. It's it's right yep. in my heart. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That's coming up for a reason. That's to be felt and to be going through the same process that we did before. Yeah. Um, so it's to get clear on this message and then to put out mm -hmm. a particular call to action. Um, even though those details aren't clear at the moment, you can you can work on them. Uh, mm -hmm. When are you going to put out that call to action? We can still put a date on that. Yeah. Let's do it. It's Sunday night here. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Let's do it next Sunday. Cool. Yeah. So you've got seven days. Mm -hmm. to basically, get these talking points very clear in a way that's exciting for you, clear mm -hmm. for them. Yeah. And what you can do is put out a particular call to action that's in your expansion around whatever it may be. It may be mm -hmm. to sign up for something, to book a call, to reach out to you, whatever the call to action may be with this specific message. And then see what happens because then you'll have more data, more feedback, and you can just be the scientist to say, okay, that mm -hmm. worked, that didn't work. This is working over here. That's not working there. Let's test and tweak and move forward. And you'll do yeah. it knowing that no matter what comes up, you can heal, you can hold mm -hmm. space for it. You breathe yeah. and, uh, and you can test the message according to what the data is. Yeah. Thoughts. I like, I like that approach. It feels, um, it feels like I I'm able to distance myself from it mm -hmm. a little bit, thinking about it as like data and, the, you know, being a scientist and, and, uh, that I don't have to be, it's a reminder rather that I don't have to be attached to whatever shows up. It, it literally is like, okay, that worked. Make a note, let's do that again. This didn't work. All right, throw that away. Or like, how can I make it work maybe? But, uh, but I can let all that emotion go. It doesn't make me a failure. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. Awesome. Putting the message in it, Putting the message out there is a success. Mm -hmm. That is the success. Cool. Do you have any particular yeah. questions that come up? Anything that's coming up that you want to discuss? Ask. How else can how else can I help you? No, I don't think so. Plenty to work on, hey. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. And also, I'd also recommend sitting spending sometime in silence mm -hmm. to also work through this go through in your mind what happens if i put out a key message and it's very clear it's very compelling and still no mm -hmm. one signs up and no one reacts and in fact i had five people message me saying kimberly you are useless <laughs> what would yeah you the internet's a mean place <laughs> <laughs> what would you feel what would you need to hold space for what sides of you would you right. need to love unconditionally mm -hmm. and heal from that 
yeah. right? And then eventually mm -hmm. you're going to reach the point where you put out a message and it's from your heart and it's from a place of service. It's from a place of growth and expansion. And you feel just as whole, just as loved, just as safe, just as enough, just as guided, just as divine, no matter what mm -hmm. happens. If you get responses, if you don't, if you get hate mail, if you get death threats, if people say you're awesome, whatever. Mm -hmm. you, you feel it all in here. You've taken back your power. You've reclaimed your spirit. You've reclaimed and called back your soul. And it now resides here in this present moment. Yeah. Mm, how freeing. Wow. Definitely is. Yeah. Cool. How can people reach out to you if they want to be in contact, be your friend, support you on this journey, collaborate with you, give you some support? How can they do that most? Sure. Um, I think the easiest way is either on Facebook or Instagram. And that is at Did You Bring the Hummus? Okay. Did You Bring the Hummus? Cool. I'll mm -hmm. put all the links to wherever people are observing this. Um, we'll easily do that. Um, but thank you for being here. Thank you for being open, honest, you. vulnerable. It's been awesome to work through this. So if you have any questions, especially in the next few days as you uncover this, reach out to me, send me a message. I'd be happy to help. Um, anything else okay. you want to finish on? No, I just want to say thank you so much for offering this opportunity. This has been incredibly moving and helpful and I'm really excited to see where I go next. My pleasure. My pleasure. I'll see you in the serving circle or whatever call I see you on next and best, yeah. of, best of luck for getting this out there. And thanks for following your heart, doing what's necessary for your own inner healing and just giving the world what it needs. Thanks for being here. Thank you.